Hello and welcome to <laughs> Wi-Fi, friends. Oh, someone's laughing at me already. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm Cameron, and I'm joined by John. Hey, oh yeah, this is where I talk. Yeah, this is where you talk. And we have a special guest, the first ever guest on Wi-Fi, friends. Hi, Laura. Hi. John was just laughing through your intro to get us back for laughing through his D&D intro oh, yeah. this week. Oh, Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I hope you guys read it. It just felt so bad for ruining the <laughs> flow and by. I was nervously excited to get back into D and D. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a it was a long break. Even though technically I played a game like every week, it was still it wasn't the same. It was tough. It was like it was like I didn't know how much I like really enjoyed playing week to week until there was that break, and then it was just like. Ugh. What do I do? Like, even though I'm supposed to be sleeping, technically, like, during our games, I took the opportunity to sleep. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I did feel a little bit bad for talking through the intro, especially after reading it and being like, oh, wow, this is really good. But, like, you can't oh, play Oh, this is the first time that John said something real actually okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is so surprisingly good. I can't believe something this good. I'm used to just the subpar nonsense that comes off the top of his head. <laughs> well, you did you did make a point of being like, right, let's just jump straight into this. Which was like, okay, let's let's get into it. But I couldn't process it, you know? I do believe the yeah. words you guys shut up were said <laughs> at one point. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, still... I will neither confirm sometimes nor deny. The, sometimes the DM has to pull rank, man. I understand. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, not all of us are have super cool like music cues and like, you know, uh, just a deep gravelly voice that commands respect. <laughs> I've been watching um, Critical Role, trying to catch up to you guys, and like, it is, it's, it's like I get it, obviously, because it's a show and they have to be professional and stuff, but it's so like crazy when when matt's just looking at them like are you ready to carry on yeah <laughs> like he's just giving them that look and he's just like oh my favorite is when he does like the dad voice thing Which i'm means? like okay guys like oh. sometimes like <laughs> <laughs> just get off on like an improv or something for a little too long or like off on like a random thing that happens like outside of the the game sphere or whatever and he's just like and we're back. Okay, we're back now. <laughs> I think what we need to do for our games is we need to like always have a, a John cam so that we can see when you're staring at us just waiting. Because a lot of times like we're, we're like improving and talking and stuff and we don't realize the tiny little thumbnail of you is just like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, come on. <laughs> um, so anyway, yes, we have a guest on this episode, John. Did you realize? <laughs> no, you know, I wasn't sure, actually. I think we have, we have what, five guests. Five guests? Yeah, because we have um, a four-year-old, uh, a dog that might make an appearance. Oh, yeah, there's a dog next to me as well, but he's sleeping very soundly. I might wake him up. Oh, uh, well, yeah, my, my good boy's on the couch right now, actually. Oh, nice. Does he have anything co to contribute? Uh, not currently. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just going to be doing um, pretty much the same podcast. It's not, you know, nothing's different, but we got a, we got a fun friend to talk with because... Like, I don't know, guys. How am I going to mesh with you? Like, uh, we've never oh. had a conversation, just the three of us before. Honestly, Sarcasm. I'm just uncomfortable already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, the funny thing is, because uh, I talked about this earlier, that I went back and listened to the first literal time that me and Cameron have talked. Mm. on through recording well it was actually the first time we've ever talked it was recorded yeah in general, yeah because really? yeah, literally the first thing that we ever like discussion we ever had anything really was him messaging me saying hey do you want to do a video with me and then we just did it and so we would had maybe one sentence of like conversation through text beforehand and the rest of it is just us as like twelve year olds badly trying to talk about Green Lantern, so Aww. it was good. Yeah, I think it was we were a little too. bit older. Wait, what year did Green Lantern come out? Two thousand eight. Yeah, it was like two thousand eight. So we were like, I don't even. Uh... Wait, I can do this math. Uh, I'm twenty. That's the year I graduated high school. Oh wow! Oh, wow. I'm the old person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> in the virtual room. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was literally thirteen years old. That's weird. Okay, That's see, weird. I wasn't that off. Yeah, you were. You said. Twelve. And why did we have YouTube? Why did we think we had the authority to talk about anything on the internet? I, 
I mean, we were valid in our excitement for that movie because we did enjoy it when it came out. <laughs> so I think our... Basically, this is the the quick version of the story, Lauren. We, um, we, we were part of that, like, uh, those reviewers that were fans of the bigger comic book reviewers and wanted to be comic book reviewers ourselves, but we didn't get any views. So we just watched each other's videos. Oh yeah. Not too different to what we do now, but anyway, <laughs> so we would like me and John would both make videos and like each other's videos, but never talk to each other. And then green Latin was coming out and I knew John was a green Latin fan. Cause he was reviewing green Latin comics and stuff. And I was like, Hey, do you want to be in a green Latin? Uh... Oh, so this is before you guys even had like, like a full on internet friendship. No, this is yeah, how this it started. Yeah, this is how it started. Oh, okay. See, yeah. I thought it had been like... So that was like literally the first time you guys had communicated. Yeah. Yeah, it was... And, and it was like I was nervous. I was in... I was literally in my grandmother's kitchen on my laptop. Like, I'm going to call him now. And I was like, hey, are you ready to do the v- video? And then he was like, yeah. And then we hit record. And we we talked for about 40 minutes about this Green Latin trailer that I think was maybe two minutes long. <laughs> That was back in the day when uh, when Skype's free call recorder would only allow you to record in like fifteen minute chunks. I think. Yeah, yeah, and it would not tell. It would it would record for the forty minutes, but then after like ten or fifteen minutes, it would just go to static. The recording yep. would just be static. So we talked for forty minutes. I stopped recording. I was like, "Thanks, goodbye." Hung up. Listened to it back, and after ten minutes, the 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 audio was just unusable. <laughs> so- I was like, Aww. oh, so we, we, we cut, we chopped it off and put it up as a video. And then that exists to this day as like John and I's first ever interaction. Um, that is adorable. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's, Speaking of adorable, segue. Oh. Oh. Kieran, how are things going? How's your life? That was the worst <laughs> segue of all time. You could have. You're welcome. You, you could have been like, uh. Uh, no, actually, I don't have a better one. Uh, my life's going pretty yes, good. See? <laughs> Look at me. I'm usually the one getting us off track. Um, yeah, we. I, I, I've been okay. I'm currently house sitting, so I'm in a quite an echoey room. Um, oh. Well, I'm, I'm dog sitting slash house sitting um, for this big chonker called Monty. He's a massive ridgeback, but he's very cute. Um, and I understood um, two of those words. Like a chonker, you know, it's like a big chubby dog. You know? Yeah, like a, like a chunk. No, I got that. It was more oh. so the technical dog terms or things that just, I don't I know. I know what dogs. a Ridgeback is. That's only because my husband's childhood dog was a Ridgeback. Oh, they're cute. They're like a big, um, they're usually like a big brown dog and they kind of look like, I don't know how to describe him. He's just looking They're houndish. Like... Yeah, <laughs> but he, they've got a big ridge on their back, which is why they're called yeah. Six degrees of dog paration. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everyone is connected by six types of t- six different dogs. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so I'm just house sitting. But uh, yeah, I guess, God, I I've got two jobs right now, and it's like I'm really busy. But I find that when I'm busy, it's better because I sleep well. Like I don't know about you guys, but when I like have a lot of free time, I end up just staying up watching like Stranger Things. Um, but when when you when you like work in constantly, you like head hits the pillow and you're out. You just dead. See, I have the problem of having doing that um bored midday sleeping, where I won't mean to, but I'll just start listening to podcasts, and then I'll just twelve o'clock in the afternoon just be asleep <laughs> on the couch. Chronic insomnia, can't relate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we've got like the three different versions. There's yeah. the I'm sleeping healthy. I sleep during the day. I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like when I'm at work, it's fine. Like going to sleep at night's good. But like when I, if I'm, I have nothing going on during the day, man, it is hard for me to keep a schedule. I can't nap. See, I can't do. I just it, it messes me up so bad because like. Oh, I feel like garbage when I wake up. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I know people who like they nap because like you know because they just don't have time to like sleep normal hours and stuff like like jen's a teacher so like she has to wake up super early and she's usually up late marking so she has to take every opportunity she can and she just like her eyes wake up after a nap and she's just up and she's going around and i'm just like how <laughs> like how are you not shell shocked what is going on but i just i can't i can't i can't do that but um yeah i've been i've been uh enjoying this, this second job thing it's i'm, I'm working with kids um i'm doing uh-huh. like a uh, like a play scheme to get no play scheme. Okay, so you being the janitor at your wife's school doesn't really count as working with kids. <laughs> no, I swear. You dropping her off at work does not count as. 
<laughs> I can't drive. How would I drop her off at school? Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you don't. Try. I mean, I don't. I can drive. I choose not to. Oh, okay. I choose to allow my wife, who's a much better driver, to drive. Mm. Are you, uh, She's just better at it. So I, I, I failed my test five times so far. Going for this. Wait, uh, this oh, oh see, I'm the choice. I didn't realize you literally. No, it's quitting. it's not a choice. I keep trying. I'm I'm. <sighs> Oh, like every single one of my friends knew this fact except for you two, so I was like, well, I guess I'm just <laughs> saying it now, embarrassing myself on a podcast. Yeah, I tr- I failed my test uh, five times so far, and it's like every time I get in, and there's the person with the clipboard, and they're looking at you, I just start profusely sweating, oh. and I'm just like, I can't do it, and my hands are shaking, but I'm okay um, when I'm in a not a, like a test scenario, when I'm in like a, uh, yeah. like a try um a uh, training scenario and like i can i've insured on on jen's car so like i drive around in that car um but john had the unfortunate experience when he came over to wales to <laughs> to be in the back of jen's car while i was driving because i was like oh my friends here from america i'm gonna drive so john and christina were in the back and jen was next to me and she was like all right buckle up lads this is gonna be crazy <laughs> And I like immediately was like stalled on the on the first like two minutes oh, and I'm goodness. like bumping, swerving around the road and I was just like John's come over in a in a plane <laughs> across the Atlantic Ocean and he's gonna die in a car crash in Wales. <laughs> Story of my life. Yeah, but I I'm I'm still trying, you know, you just gotta keep trying. I'm just Yeah, I'm a very nervous person when people are like testing me. I never did good at tests in school. Like, I was always better at, like, homework or, or like... Yeah. Yeah, it's just... It, it. But, yeah, I guess that was the long version of saying, I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm busy, <laughs> but I'm pretty good. How are you, John? Oh, you know, I'm good. I've been uh, hopping around looking for... Not looking for work. I have work, but looking for different work, mm. which has been very fun. Uh, I did just have an interview the other day, though, which okay. went really well. Oh, nice. Um... So it'll be interesting if that works out. Uh, I might also be doing the the two jobs thing, though, man. Yeah, it's 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 good, but it's also like I, I get it mixed up in my head because I have one job that I way way prefer. So it's like I'm going yeah. to work, and then it's like you finish that that job, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to work. Oh. <laughs> um, Capitalism. I don't know about you. Do you find interviews way easier than applying to jobs? Uh, yeah. Well, so it's interesting because i feel like i don't know if they're we apply for jobs differently because i didn't apply for a job when i was over in the uk um but <laughs> Why i not? like company yeah Laura, i know every, every country i Laura thought about it though on her yeah holiday, she was i was just in jobs. the uk and i totally applied for a job and <laughs> oh in man and in paris <laughs> yeah. i almost i honestly did the look into the university of wales uh because we were helping on moving over there after our trip <laughs> um but yeah I, I um, but yeah applying for jobs is garbage um it's ridiculous they make you upload your resume and then they make you a- answer 20 questions about your work history as if you didn't already upload the resume onto the website that yeah. is that is literally what i was gonna say like i can't stand because i i you know like they say and like they teach you in school or maybe they don't i don't know but like they, they go, right, you got to get your resume, or it's over here, it's called a CV, and you got to figure it out, and it's got to look amazing, and you got to make it perfect, and you, like, work on all the wording, and you're like, right, it looks perfect, I can, you know, I can put my new jobs in as I go, and then you go to apply for a job, and they're like, oh, could you complete our application process online? And you're like, what? And it's just literally everything that's already in your resume, you yeah. have to read, to, and I'm just like, Ugh. and it just gives me such, like, I do that thing where I'm like, oh, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. And then the date is gone. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it was not meant to be. <laughs> you just move See, on. like, my problem is, in Lauren, I don't know if you did the same thing, but I learned, like, the Disney way to do oh, resumes. Yeah. What does that mean? I've so, only like... worked for Disney for the last, like, decade in various jobs. So, like, I only know It's a really specific Disney way stuff. to, like, make a resume. Do oh yeah like, write it like, with like a cursive pen and they have their like they, no they have their own like format and type, word choice mm-hmm. oh yeah and there are certain words uses. i would use for like applying for a disney job that i would never use for another one like 
Oh man, what are some like good Disney buzzwords? Help me out here, John. <laughs> I mean, there's obviously guess using the four keys in any. Oh yes, you know, if you're like safety show is so important. Safety is always number one. Of course, you want to be courteous to everyone and like efficient, and you know you just you want to make sure that that show is like on point. Like everything needs to be great. Those were all four keys, by the way. <laughs> For those of you that aren't in the cult of Disney. <laughs> yeah. You just it sounded Lauren like you just switched over to cast member Lauren real quick. You just like <laughs> turned into a different person for a second. I was like, what is going We're on? Like Listen, sleeper I worked agents? In services at the hotels. I'm very good at <laughs> bullshitting my way through conversations. Uh, it's sli- it's yeah, sleeper, so like, could you like yeah. could you do you think you could like if if like another Disney park that you hadn't worked at just like was like, Oh, we need someone to drop in. Do you think you could just sw- switch back into it? Yes. Literally at Disneyland Paris when I was there a week ago or a week and a half ago now, we I was like talking to different cast members and being like, oh, yeah, I work at or like I used to work at the California Disneyland and we would just like talk about it. And I was like, these people are on the same bullshit. Like we might be <laughs> <laughs> in different continents. If I but... get a call, if I'd gotten a call to like today to be like, hey, we need you in Orlando. Um, could you pick up a shift? I could draw. I like I know how. All of the processes still work. I remember like everything. I could, you know, clean up a curb. I remember my partner number. It's, it's, Off the top of my head, I could sign back in. Like, <laughs> it's mental. It's like it's because it's one. such a huge. Co- Don't say it on the podcast. Yo, I literally, I, I. The thing is, is I have to do it like on the, like I'm doing it on the I computer. Have to do it on a ten key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to do it on a ten key. <laughs> Because it's it's such a yep, massive just, yeah. company, and no one can. My number is deactivated. No one can use it for anything. But if you ever, because I stopped working at Disney and was rehired technically when I went from the Disney store to Disneyland, and it was the exact same partner number. Oh, oh nice. Your so, partner. They have like that shit unlocked. Like they know everything, and they know like all the little like. It, it's just it's mental to me, like. Because as a kid, you're, like, impressed by the magic of it. And, and I'm still impressed by the magic of it as an adult. But when you become an adult, you have, like, this newfound appreciation for how it all works and it all syncs up together. Like, recently with the magic bands, I'm, like, I can't get my he- head around how it's all, like, it just works everywhere and it's all interconnected. And like I hate to like, disappoint you, but it is utter chaos behind oh. the scenes. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're doing. Like, I love Disney and I really want to work for them again someday, but it is yeah. not it's a well oiled machine. Hilarious how much. And I think I heard John day... say almost the exact, like, he started to yeah. speak and I bet he was going to say the exact same thing. It's literally just like, uh, it's funny how much it's just a complete disaster. And it makes me happy that both of us can relate to each other when we worked at completely different resorts and like it's good to know that Walt Disney World is also a dumpster fire Disney's all the same <laughs> it's not I guess it kind of makes sense because it's like they say that about like films as well when it's like when, every, when the film's finished it looks great but like while they were making it everything's like crazy and I guess I mean Disney is just one big never ending play you know yeah so it's like behind the scenes, the, the the props guys and the cast members and everything are just kind of freaking out. But it just to the public, like I've never like, had an experience. Yeah, imagine Disney. if like tech rehearsal was every tech rehearsal was open to the public. <laughs> oh man, I could so, so like oh, again, you guys sent NDA, so like I can't ask too many questions. But I'm so. Oh, well, I mean that's I mean, that's an exaggeration. Think... Okay. Yeah, like, okay. I, like I wasn't like I knew about um I knew about Star Wars Land before it was announced by like twelve hours, not by that much. But they released a press release just to cast members, especially because I worked at a line that was open to the public. Like mm. all I did was talk to people if I was working in the phone center that were calling the hotels, and we got people who would call the hotels for not just the hotel. You know, we would get people just asking questions about mm. the park. And so, like, we had this little press release that was like, we're announcing this today. Here's all the info that's going to be announced. Here are your talking points. If they ask when it's opening, this is literally the paragraph you're supposed to say. So, like, that sort of stuff I'm not allowed to release. But also, Star Wars Land is open now, so. <laughs> Fun like, fact. You're not allowed to talk uh, about the, it, though, because I don't want to get spoiled. <laughs> what, John? When, I was going to say, when the Orlando Star Wars Land opens, um, the highest point in that building, uh, I signed it. 
The oh beam, my god! The highest beam. Yeah. I did. I did for uh, for the one here. They did the same thing for us. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just hate that I have all these friends who are getting cast previews to go see Star Wars Land, and I I'm not there anymore. Um. So yeah. God damn. God damn. I I I I'm just I'm too excited. We gotta move on, or otherwise I'm I'm too excited. Um. I I have in my notes. So I will about... admit. I don't. I think Cameron sent you our low itinerary thing. Mm. Every time we don't follow it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's did. like a three-step itinerary. It's like yeah, it's and it's like still, it's like very intense. We, like, we still made go off it as it. simple as possible, and for like maybe the first five episodes, we followed it, and like I, I don't know, man. I, I just because because again, this was designed this whole podcast, and the purpose still stands, even when we've got a guest. To like just be a chance to talk as friends, and like I think we we made the the like the like the t- the itinerary thing just to be like oh well what if we get bored or we don't know what to talk about then you have something to move on but like when you don't talk to people like except I guess at D and D now but like at the point where we didn't talk to each other over voice chat a lot you just kind of always have something to talk about um, mm-hmm. so it kind of works out but like I am interested because now we have a guest if we sh- like maybe we should like you know, maybe stick to the format a little bit. I was wondering, um, and we'll start with uh, Lauren, like, what are some of the things that you are currently consuming or just consumed that you're really into that you maybe want to talk about? Yo, my entire life ends up on Twitter, and I'm sure you (laughs) see most of it, so you can probably guess that I'm going to immediately start talking about Hades Town because that has been consuming my life. You're not the first person to bring up Hades Town, and I feel like I need to... Uh, either find a cast album or something. I mean, oh, it's so good! It's like, so good. Like, so, well, okay, so give us the little pitch, like a quick pitch without spoiling something, because I have no idea what it is. Are you at all familiar with Greek mythology? Um, Jen is obsessed with it, and she did it as part okay. of her university degree. So I've got kind of like secondhand. Familiar. Okay, it's the story of Orpheus and Eurydice, and secondary to that hades and persephone oh, if okay. you know any of those stories i know like the, i know the story of hades and persephone okay so i have that i don't know the first one <laughs> okay i know the fan fiction fan fiction version <laughs> of the story of hades and Beautiful. Persephone. oh wait, wait, wait. is it the au <laughs> there are some it is hades actually the au is actually I literally this musical is an au they like <laughs> they take that story and they make it into like the music is all like jazz but it's like how do i describe this it's a post-apocalyptic version of like depression era yes. like american south <laughs> I think pretty succinct so there's a lot of like chain gang style chants and like new orleans infused jazz music and that's like honestly it reminds me a lot of hamilton in that it takes while not necessarily a true history but it's kind of a historical story Mm. um to or like a myth you know it's like an old story that people know um i guess is how i'll put it and puts it into this completely new medium and uses music that you wouldn't necessarily first think of but it's like it's like a romantic tragedy it sounds absolutely bonkers. <laughs> it sounds it. like <laughs> hashtag my shit. It, yeah, it's very good. You should listen to it. The entire original Broadway cast recording is on Spotify. I'm sure it's on other things if you use other things. But I am a Spotify uh, lifer. Oh, love Spotify. I, it's um, best. I was like, the one thing that caught my eye other than like, you tweeting about how good it was is you you were tweeting about like lyrics and how like relevant they are when when was it released you know when it was like first made well let's see here here's another reason that it's kind of similar to hamilton and that i draw those parallels is that it was first created as a concept album which is the same thing that lin-manuel miranda did with hamilton um just a concept album that was like i'm gonna make a bunch of music that has to do with this story that i like um and then they did an off-broadway version I want to say like a year or two ago. I'm fairly new to the fandom, so I don't know all the like dates and everything. And then on Broadway, it won Best Musical this year at the Tony Awards, along with a slew of other awards, including first Broadway musical to win Best Musical. And it's exclusively uh, like uh, directed and created by women. Oh, Oh. yeah, that's surprising. 
So very first time that's ever happened. There have been like teams that had women included in them, yeah, that have but... Won, but this was only women. Oh, okay. So that's kind of cool. Uh, cool. I would have thought that like, uh, maybe I'm, because I'm, I'm like completely a noob to this uh, thing, but like I would thought like the theater industry, there would be a lot more like, uh, I guess, I guess sexism is everywhere. <laughs> so, Listen, you know, I hate to go off on a yeah. bit of a tangent here, but it kind of seems like your guys' M.O., um, and just, I'm a dancer. I thought you were say tangents or <laughs> sexual. Uh, cool. I would hope. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Oh. Um, oh gosh, there's an airplane. That's, That's my cool. thing. I live next to an airport and there's an airplane flying over. I apologize. Um, so I'm a dancer. That's what I did my whole life growing up. Taught dance until very recently. Um, and I'm always surprised at how every single class I've ever been in has been like either 100% girls or like 98% females and like 2% males. And yet, if you look at the choreographers and like directors and all this stuff, all the higher ups at any professional ballet company in the world, it's completely flipped. It's like 98% men. Oh my God. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's like... It's the thing that I'm not, again, tangent, but like, it's the thing that I feel the worst about when I just assume that there's not something bad about something, you know? Like, I'm, mm. I just, I default to like, no, I'm sure that's fine. And then you find out and you're just like, I'm such a dumb dumb, of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be like, ugh. Yeah, it's, oh. it's a problem, but. So, um. Well, to Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Independence Day. <laughs> Do you think that uh, Town was like, because you made those parallels on Twitter, just for context, if anyone else is listening, um, considering our number one fan is on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> um, you, That's you so sweet about... of you to call her a fan and just not a bored participant. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm not a fan. I'm your guys' friend. I mean, yeah. I am a fan, yeah. but that makes it seem like I'm some weird stalker. Right? Like... <laughs> Jeez, well, Cameron. I'm a fan of John, you know? Okay. That's why. Oh. Cameron, oh. you're gonna make me cry. I'm, I'm, All right, a I'm, fan I'm kicking of... Lauren off the cot. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Um, no, but the, the 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 what I was talking about is the uh, the parallels you were making between some of the lyrics in Hades Town, um, and specifically, like I assume it was the villain's char- the villain character being a little bit of Hades. Of a, oh yes, of course. Uh, being a little bit of a let's say presidential allegory. Oh, it's there is a song called "Why We Build the Wall." <laughs> That's literally the name of the song. And in this musical, instead of... Because, like, it is still gods and men. It's not like they took away the magicalness of it. Okay. Um, it's still it's still about Hades ruling over the underworld. It's still about Persephone. Like, the reason that we get the seasons, it's six months of summer when she's up above with her mother, which isn't a character that they really touch on in the musical, or six months of winter, or, like, fall and winter, when she's down in the underworld, and that's why we get the seasons. That's, like, that's the story of Hades and Persephone, essentially, if you didn't know. Um, But instead of it being, like, the river Styx, it's a wall that they're building, and that's what Hades is torturing all of the people in the underworld with, is, like, they build this wall. And the song, it's like a round where it like it builds on itself every time. And he adds another reason why they're building the wall. And the reasons are like to keep out poverty and poverty is the enemy. And why do they want to get here? Because we have work. We're working on this wall and they have none. And like, oh, it's like, I'm like, I don't know exactly when she started working on it. Like, I don't know when the concept album, as I type loudly, I'm sure, um, came out for Hades Town, but are you actually could... researching your talking yes. points so that you say the correct thing? <laughs> oh, we have to quit. We have to quit. <laughs> we're, we're done. Um, okay, it came out in 2010, so it definitely predated oh, okay. yeah. all of this madness that's happening right now with Trump. But it's uh, like I don't know how much was changed between that, and certainly I'm sure that there has always been even as far back as nine years ago, people <laughs> being racist toward immigrants. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like that allegory is old. Be there. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I mean that's the thing. You find that a lot of times now, where like you watch something and be like, "Ooh, this must be a Trump diss," and then you look at it and you're like, "Oh, actually, no. This is this was relevant a long before this." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Shit. It's almost like we now have like something to look at. 
but it was kind of oh, it's 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 kind of sad that it's always been relevant. Um, that's co- I mean I, I'm gonna have to change that because like I always worry with musicals about listening to the album before watching the show, but then I'm like, when am I gonna get a chance? You know, like I I I, I held off on listening to Hamilton for about two years, and then I was like, I'm never gonna get Hamilton tickets. I mean, so just... this is kind of my problem with current like. <sighs> I big budget sounds weird, but like Broadway, okay. Uh-huh. You know, like because the Shakespeare Globe has a really awesome like programs and stuff for you to be able to stream and watch their plays. Yes. But oh. let's pay five million dollars for Hamilton tickets. <laughs> well, part of that inflation is because scalpers buy up the tickets and resell well, yeah. them. Yeah. Not all of it. Certainly, yeah. you can get. Uh, like a ticket for like I don't know Les Mis for like 20 bucks if you're going to be in the cheap seats and like the cheap seat tickets for Hamilton when you get them from the theater are still like over $100 but capitalism baby they're going to do that yeah. no matter what it's 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 crazy when you get the $2,000 tickets for front row usually it's more like 600 for Hamilton and then people buy them and sell them at inflated costs I just That's wish still could, very expensive, but you know, make it expensive. more more available for yeah, you know, just uh, they do different they do like stuff. ten dollar day of tickets, but it's always less than there are people that want to see it that can't Once afford it, to, yeah. you know. And then more so for like the type of people that can't get out to um, places that do have even just off Broadway productions that locally come through, or like the touring ones. Yeah, I yeah. listen it's a it's a contended it's a contended issue in the broadway community but i don't really feel that bad about it because i see lots of shows and i support things that come through town but i am a big bootlegger so yeah Yeah. i've i've really hoped that nobody that is involved with hades town ever listens to this why would they but i have already seen hades town and i listened to it for the first time about five days ago (laughs) (laughs) I think, um, it, I, because I work in a theater, um, and we constantly get, um, over here it's called, uh, uh, oh my god, wait, what is it called? I can't, I'm blanking on this. This is the one thing I was an expert at, and now I'm blanking <laughs> on it. Um, Na- National Theatre Life. Okay, I got it. So there's this thing called National Theatre Life, and it basically is like in the West End. Um, they go around to all the theaters, and uh, if the the company will permit it, and obviously they they charge and stuff, they'll stream uh, the live show uh, into theaters all across Britain. And one of the theaters is our theater that I work at, so I get to see a lot of shows um, that are happening in London on the West End just streamed live, and it's really cool because you get to see these shows that, like John said, if you don't live in London, you have to take a trip to London, you have to pay for all the transport and everything, and then you have to pay for the show. Whereas if you come to, you know, the Great Hall, you pay a reduced cost because you're not seeing it actually on stage, you're just seeing a projection of it. Um, and you don't have to pay for, you know, travel because you get to just see it in the theatre. And it's really, really cool. It's a great idea. I've seen, I've seen a bunch of shows working there, and also, I've also, like, paid to go there on my days off to watch shows. But the thing is, it's always shows that aren't, obviously the biggest shows in london you know they're not streaming hamilton they're not streaming um uh wicked and stuff they're streaming the the, the smaller shows that need a bit of extra revenue which totally makes sense but it is a bit of a bummer that it's like there's no way they can work it out you know there's no way that they can kind of get the maximum amount of tickets that they deserve because they put on this amazing show but also find a way to kind of you know because because for me hamilton's a big one because i'm such a big fan and i've always kind of been like "Eh, is there like a way i can pay to just have it like just temp like rent it maybe but like you can- i can't figure listen out boy i can hook you up <laughs> Saying. yeah i mean i just feel like a drug like... dealer but i have i, I don't have a, a folder of porn on my computer i do have a folder of bootlegs <laughs> that's my like, dark secret i feel like in 2019 it's more likely to get a folder of bootlegs on your actual <laughs> hard drive now <laughs> um that'd be cool i'm just gonna write note down to, to nice. remind me to ask you that <laughs> but like that's the thing like it is it is interesting that there are no kind of solutions to that yet yeah but, it's like, frustrating we have something similar in the u.s i don't know john if they have it all over the US, but definitely here on the West Coast, we have Fathom Events, which is not streamed, but they'll like professionally record 
usually once something is off Broadway and is like not touring, they'll record it and you can go to a theater and see it. And it's usually like on this day, we're going to be doing this at theaters throughout the country. I saw Newsies that way. I'd actually already seen Newsies as the touring company, but I'm obsessed with Newsies. So of course I saw it again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a good solution, but I mean, the off Broadway, uh, like when it comes off, um, Broadway kind of makes sense because it's like, well, that's how they make their revenue now. Um, yeah. But I don't know. Do they have stuff like that around where you live, John? 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 <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> we lost John. Oh, I heard for like a second. John? <laughs> See, this is why we don't edit because it's it's the real shit, Lauren. Oh, this yeah. Is, this is. Uh... I like live in it. This is the struggle. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask John what he was into, but I guess while we wait for him to get back, is there anything else you've been really into? That has been consuming my last week. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I get it's good I'm to have lie. the one thing. I get, well, have you seen, because I know John yeah. has. Have you? Oh, all... I heard him for a second. John, come back to us, please. Ah, well. Um, <laughs> he'll probably figure it out. I'm going to give him a message on Facebook. Um, yeah, have you seen all of Stranger Things Season 3 now? Yes, I have. Okay, cool. Because I'm only five episodes in, but I didn't want to, you know, talk about it if if, uh, if I was going to spoil it. So that's kind of what I've been, I've been on recently. I have had a lot of time, but in the small bits of free time I've had, I've been watching Stranger Things. And it just makes me so happy. Like, I, I don't know if you get this, but, like, there's a lot of moments in the show where I'll see, like... The, the the plot is happening like the, the 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 upside down stuff there's the russian stuff and everything but then there's also the character moments where there's nothing really plot related happening like the day you things. haven't gotten to my favorite character moment from this season yet oh okay okay well you, I, honestly i'm kind of worried that i've spoiled you on it because i've tweeted about it a bunch <laughs> oh well i i'm pretty good at like sussing out the the like uh, the topic of a tweet and be like, oh, I'm just gonna okay, okay. move on quickly from that. So I have seen people tweeting about Stranger Things, but I haven't okay. really. Um, Your but... eyes glaze over and you keep scrolling. Yeah, I'm just like, oh god, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Um, I'm a little bit distracted because I'm like, I know, I know John. John, John, where are you? Um, uh, everything okay? Question mark. But uh, yeah, like I, I kind of got a little bit sad. I'm still obviously really, really enjoying it. I got a little bit sad when like the demigog, uh, uh, sorry, the um, the upside down and the mind flayer stuff started. To, like the kids started to find out about it because they kind of had to ignore all their personal issues and and team up to fight it. So like I was really enjoying like the first two episodes. <laughs> it just felt like a John Hughes movie, and I was really into it. And I'm still obviously into the show. But like the writers, they can they do something where you just like. I would watch them just a whole season of them at the mall, you know, where like nothing bad happens and it's just fun, you know, the Stranger Things kids just hang. Oh, John left. <laughs> Maybe he'll get back in and it'll be fixed. Yeah. Um, but like some of my highlights so far is like <laughs> Alan Max at the mall while also the boys are at the mall and there's this kind of like the montage of them missing each other and it, it like it, uh. And, you know, they finally find each other, and then it's the line, I dump your ass. <laughs> like, Love it. It's, it's just, I don't know how they. they just I just want to watch. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I just want to watch an entire show of Will trying to get everybody to play D&D, because your girl yeah. relates. <laughs> it was so related. Like, I, whenever that would come up, it would definitely be like, I, there's the meme going around now. So it's a little bit like soiled it, but it still works so well, because I'm just like, yeah. I agree with Will. Like, let's play d and I saw an interview where uh, some of the kids were saying, like, oh, yeah, in season three, you know, they don't really play D&D anymore because they're growing older and, like, d and is for kids. And then the Duffer brothers, obviously, who write the show, were just like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, d and for adults as well. <laughs> like, what are you talking about for kids? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, stop making fun of us kids in Stranger Things. <laughs> but, like, I, it's just, it's really been, like, one of those shows where I've been trying to take it as slow as possible. Have you ever got that, like, where you're watching a show and you, you feel it coming to an end, so you just start, like, portioning it out? and it's like, Oh, I... This is honestly kind of embarrassing because 
I have a lot of favorite TV shows. I'm a TV addict, but one of my favorite, one of my hundreds of favorite TV shows is Teen Wolf, and I still haven't finished it. It's been like two years, and I still haven't watched the last like three or four episodes because I just don't want it to end. Do you... I'm like, I'm okay with just not knowing the end. I'm sure I will <laughs> eventually, but I just like, every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, but I, w- I just, I have to go back and watch it from the beginning, duh. Like, I can't just, do you I can't do just that? like... Like, do you go back before, like, it's it's available to finish, but you, instead of finishing it, you'll go back to the beginning and start again? Yes, I, definitely. See, that is, so, that's what I, like, I have got a, um, do you know the, you know the show Castle with Nathan Fillion? Yes, I've never watched it, but I'm aware so, of it. So I really got into Castle, and I was always, like, a season behind, obviously, because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't come out here at the same time as it comes out in America, and... Uh, I watched a season, uh, I think it was like season eight, and it had a kind of really nice ending where there were no like cliffhangers or anything. And then season nine came out in America and then they canceled it. And I looked up and it was like, oh yeah, season nine ends on a cliffhanger. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just never watch season nine and just keep rewatching it to season eight. And yeah. Then, uh, it's just, oh, I got a message. Apparently John's, John's power went out. What? <laughs> Well, we are having a massive heat wave, although I'm like six states away from John right now, so I don't know. Oh my god. Well, this is the most eventful thing that's happened on the podcast. Um, I'm just going to text him, did it come back? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry that this is happening in your premiere episode, Lauren. <laughs> premiere episode, as if you guys are ever going to have me back again. <laughs> No, I've well, cursed. I've cursed it. Honestly, it was just your performance. I can't just take this. <laughs> you just hate me as a person. We don't get along. When it's just you, me, and John and D and D, you're like, "Fuck, really? I have to deal with this girl again." Wait, it was. It was. I'm like joking aside. When we like got back on, I know we're back onto this, but like we were always going to talk about D and D again. Like, of course. When we logged back on, and it was like the like the three. I obviously it sucks that like scheduling is so weird and yeah. it's so hard to find a day where everyone is available but like even just like the three of us it was just so it made me so happy because it's like well and it's like again like i wish we could have all five people there always but more often than not if it's only three people it's you me and john yeah yeah and and i think that oh, did the did the plane crash into your... <laughs> no, I just live right next to an airport. It's loud. I try and mute the microphone when I hear them coming most of the time. <laughs> no, it's cool. It does, I mean, it doesn't bother, but, like, it was funny because I heard the, the plane, and I was like, oh, there's the plane. And then I heard other sounds. I was like, is it crashing? <laughs> Sorry. No, but, like, um, but like, it just it becomes this thing where, like, you've almost got another group of friends, you know? Like, you, like I feel like everyone only has time for a certain amount of you know friends in their life you could you have like acquaintances and, and like people who are like oh yeah they're my friends but i haven't talked to them in ages but like D is um it just feels like this one other excuse to just have oh yeah these are the other people that i they kind of like we schedule hangouts which sounds sad but as an adult you kind of have to schedule hangouts you know oh i hate to get sappy on main here but like you guys are some of my best friends right now. <laughs> like I hang out with you guys so consistently and so much that I'm like, you're like some of the first people that I think of when I'm like, Ooh, something exciting happened. Like I'm going to text Johnny cam. <laughs> it's, it, it is true. Genuinely. Cause like it, it, it is that consistency as well. And it, it's that, um, oh, John is oh, so no. is out. I'm going to put a sad face. Um, it's that consistency as well as like, um, it, it kind of creates that relationship and also because we have like twitter like people always say you know the internet's like got good and bad things and i you know i definitely think there are a lot of bad things about it but like one of the good things is like i mean john and i's relationship was like reliant on this as well but most you know even more so now like me and your relationship it's like most of it is over twitter and then there's one, <laughs> once a week we played D D. but it it doesn't feel less valid than any other friendship i think it feels oh, just not as, yeah and and i i love how you know you can kind of have those those friendships and like like i'm the same like I'll, I'll have certain things that happen to me where i'm like oh this person will find this funniest or this person and there's definitely times where i'm like oh shit i should tell that to, to lauren on twitter or like i should tweet and like sometimes i'm tweeting something and i'm like oh lauren will probably like a reply to this, <laughs> this, this <laughs> Listen, <is our> <laughs> i am 
pretty much always on Twitter. You and John <laughs> are not. And so basically anytime either of you tweet anything, sometimes I'll like see one of your tweets pop up and it'll say like 48 seconds ago. And I'm like, listen, hold off. You don't have to like it within 30 seconds of them <laughs> posting the tweet. Let's calm down. <laughs> and like, I like won't like it. And then I'll like it like a minute later. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry. Cause I mean, like every time, but this, I'm not ashamed of this. Like Twitter is like very much a social thing. So like sometimes I'll tweet something. And there's definitely a moment where I'm like, I hope someone relates to that. You know, it's a very human thing of like, I hope I'm not the only one who thinks that way. And like, it's the another thing I found as well is because I was kind of, I didn't kind of use Twitter much before the D&D game because other than John, everyone I followed was like someone I'm a fan of, you know? So it was like, oh, I'd see what people are up to. But you never really tweet like, you know, I'm not going to tweet like, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of some random person like Simon Pegg. I'm not going to tweet Simon Pegg like, yeah. hey, how's it going today, Simon? <laughs> I know people probably do that, but like, but now that I have like friends who are on Twitter a lot, it's funny because I enjoy opening it and seeing what everyone's up to, and like, like seeing your Legend of Korra cosplay was like, oh, that's fucking dope. I was, you know, <laughs> I, was, I was liking it and, and like seeing what Jed's doing and Steve. And then there's definitely this time period i mean not so much with you because like as we recently addressed you struggle with insomnia which is sad but like <laughs> there's there's definitely this time period where like none of my friends are on twitter and i'm awake and i'm just like okay I'm just i feel scared. that because i was just in your time zone like a week and a half ago and i remember being like all of my friends are asleep <laughs> like, it's, it's literally just me being like yeah welcome to my world i know i'm so sorry <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so, update from John. Storm has kind of knocked everything out. It seemed bad earlier, but it looks like I'm just going to have to wait until they get it turned back on. Oh, my goodness. This oh, my God. Couldn't have... Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what? Um, I'm going to... Wait there. I'm just going to message John. Do you mind us... Uh, uh... Peek behind me. Go, uh, oh yeah, this is total PPM. Right, I'm just gonna. Do you mind? Uh, oh shit, I don't know what to do. Should we just say? We could uh, just not continue. I'm it's gonna type, okay. I'm gonna say like we shall. We shall wrap it up and record again soon. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I had to read out everything I'm saying because it's an audio format. Um, God, I'm sorry, Lauren. I feel really bad now. I know I wasn't the one who created the storm, or maybe I was. But like, I I don't know. I will def. I tell you what. I promise, and I'm gonna make this 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 promise on the podcast because oh shit. I promise that the next podcast we record, we'll uh, invite you again, and you can be on. This is like a part. All right, we'll call this part. One. Listen, we didn't actually get to the topic, and I prepped. Dude, I, can I just say my... All right, tell you what. You know what, John? I feel like... I feel like no, no, no. I'm saying we can do it again, but you guys just have to have me on because I prepped. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of want to say mine, though. Have you got multiple or have you got the one? Oh, I've got a few. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's say one each, and then next okay. episode we'll do like a whole thing. It'll be like the whole podcast. We'll start the podcast. Okay. So okay. I, want, I really wanted to say mine because I feel like you would like it. Because I thought of it and I was like, oh, wait, I've seen Laura tweet about that. Mine is Bard. Okay. <gasps> so yes. like perfect Bard. And it's uh, Paul Bettany as Chaucer <laughs> in A Knight's Tale. <laughs> you know that that's my favorite movie, right? I do. And I didn't know that until I, lit I, I literally watched it like a month ago. And I was uh -huh. like, how have I never seen this movie? This is amazing. Because Jen was like, how have you never seen this movie? This is amazing. When we were flicking through Netflix. I watched it and I was like, this is fucking awesome. And then I was just like, like, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, you tweeted about it. And I was like, oh, well, good, good job I watched it. Steve, I no, this is what happened. Steve tweeted that he watched it. And I was like, um, you just yes. tweeted about my favorite movie. I have to respond to this. <laughs> like, And yes. I, that's all I said was just, this is my favorite movie. And this is me responding. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, so so yes, Paul Bettany in that movie. For those who haven't seen it, John, if you're listening to this after the fact, 
um, if you haven't seen it, he is literally the definition of a D&D bard. <laughs> like, he gives inspiration to the main character, and he also, like, intimidates all the other characters. He's just, like... And, and he's, like, like, the chief giver of love advice, which I think is pretty classic for a bard. <laughs> it was, watching that movie, all I could think about... I mean, it was an amazing movie. I enjoyed it a lot. But, like, whenever he's on screen, all I could think about was, like, this is, like quintessential bard <laughs> I, I just couldn't get over it and he's so entertaining like the, the entire movie's great but like every time he does like he like gets up on the like the, the gate and stuff and it's just like it's just non-stop like smiling it's just smiling near to you I, I fucking loved it um Give us one. Give us a tease of some of the ones you're going to bring to the next episode. Then. Oh, man. Okay. Because, okay, I was going to do one that was literally from Hades Town because I was like, oh, oh I can tie it together. That Orpheus is a bard and he's from the College of Lore because, like, his whole thing, again, it didn't seem like you were familiar with Orpheus, but, like, Orpheus is uh, credited in Greek mythology with creating love songs and love poetry. Oh. Okay. And, like, his whole thing is that he, like, sings. And he like, he is also where the whole, like, sing to make a monster go to sleep. Like, he sings to Cerberus and Cerberus falls asleep. And that's, like, where that, like, oh, shit. trope comes from, too. <laughs> so, like, it's, like, he's, like, the original bard. <laughs> <laughs> the OG bard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like to believe that, like, in a homebrew game, you could even have, like, bards who, like, worship him, and it's like their god is obvious. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, there usually aren't gods attached to bards, but... Uh, you can, you can do whatever you want. This is the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the amazingness of D&D, is that you can uh-huh. do whatever the fuck you want. Unless John gets angry. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine John ever getting angry. I was just going to say, I, like, literally cannot imagine John even being, like disappointed in us <laughs> like we don't really have the type of players that would do this but i would i would love to see what would happen if someone actually was like you know when they like some certain players like they cheat the system they make the perfect character who has no yeah. weaknesses and everything like i would love to see how john would deal with that he would just probably just like throw insane monsters at the person. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean that's a teaser for the next episode we'll definitely have you on we'll try and do it <laughs> asap i feel real bad for john um, I know. Hopefully, uh, we can do it as soon as possible, and hopefully, his power comes back on. Because oh wow, that's scary. Um, God, I, 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 and a storm as well. Like, what, how how strong is that storm? Anyway, I know. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'm sorry. Thanks for strong. having me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope you enjoyed, and we will get to uh, we'll get to um, uh, doing the part two as soon as possible. Goodbye. Okay. Bye.